All right. Hello again, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Megan Mendiola, and I'm a Regional Marketing Coordinator here at JMT. We're very excited to have our very own Andy Harleman here with us to lead us in today's webinar over modern budgeting and planning, the best tools and trends every nonprofit should know about. I'll share just a couple of housekeeping notes before I turn it over to Andy to get us started. If you do have any questions during today's webinar, please go ahead and submit those into the Q&A section on your control panel. We're going to go ahead and save those all until the end of the presentation, but don't hesitate to go ahead and submit those as you think of them and we will get them answered at the end. Also, just a reminder that we will send you both the slides and recording of today's webinar within 24 hours after its conclusion. And now I want to take a minute to introduce Andy Harleman to you all. Andy lives in St. Louis and is the Director of Sales here at JMT. He also has extensive nonprofit background knowledge as well. He helped found a social services agency and served out as an, as an administrative director there. He also served on the governing board of a nonprofit in St. Louis. He has been consulting to nonprofits since 2006. And now Andy, without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you to get us started. Thank you, Megan. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Very good. Well, hopefully you don't hear the barking dog, but this is the world we live in now, folks. Uh, I haven't been uh, out of my house in seven months or something. So hopefully the dog won't be a distraction, but uh, thank you for joining us all today. Uh, really appreciate it. And I know that everyone's busy and this has been a crazy year. So first, before we get started on the, the actual budgeting and planning tool, I just wanna make sure that anyone on the call here understands who JMT is, who are these people who have invited me to a webinar about easing my budgeting and planning woes. So JMT is a firm, we're an independent consulting firm who works only with nonprofits. So your mission at your nonprofit is our business. We have thousands of happy clients. We are known for rapid and affordable implementations. And you know we're small enough to provide exceptional and personalized service, but we're also large enough to handle any scope of any project that you may be uh, needing to do. So we, as I say, we're, we all we do is work with nonprofits and we were built, we built a team of people who have this kind of background and experience. And Megan mentioned some of my background with nonprofits and we were founded by a person, Jackie Tizo, who was herself a uh, controller and CFO at multiple nonprofit organizations. And back almost 30 years ago, it will be 30 years in January, hard to believe, she founded JMT with the idea that had she'd been through a, as a customer a few technology implementations that she was uh, less than impressed by. And she believed that JMT could do better. And she most importantly believed that nonprofits deserve better. Nonprofits deserve to be able to take advantage of all the cutting edge technology that's available to the for-profit world and needs to have people help them implement it, people who understand nonprofits. So it was with that spirit that she founded JMT. And it's interesting because in those days, what she meant by cutting edge technology probably had something to do with uh, a box full of floppy disks and a DOS uh, operating system. But, uh, but now we've, we've monitored the technology out there over the 30 years that we've been in business. And we're always here to let nonprofits know what's out there today. And so today we're gonna talk a lot about Vena, but uh, before I get to that, I'll just finish up with JMT's background. You know, we were founded in New York. You can see we have offices all over now. And uh, with this day and age with Zoom, it hasn't mattered. It hasn't really slowed us down at all with uh, COVID and everything else because we were already doing a lot of work remotely. Yes, we'd love to come out and see you in person if we can, but we haven't missed a step and we are still serving all of our clients, even in this uh, more remote world that we're living in these days. These are some examples of some of the happy clients that have worked with JMT over the years. And I always like to use this quote, Anthony was kind enough to give this to us. And it just backs up what I'm saying. Having a nonprofit consulting firm that really understands nonprofit is critical. I've often used the analogy, it's if you, uh, for example, go to the doctor because you have an eye problem, you typically want to go see an ophthalmologist. Any general practitioner knows a thing or two about the eyes, but you really want to go to someone who specializes in the eyes if you're dealing with something that important. And that's how it is with implementations as well. You really want to work with someone who knows it like JMT. Now we are independent. We're not a, a software publisher. And this is why that should be important to you. Our commitment is to you and to the project going well. We are able, because we're independent, we're not beholden to any one software publisher. We're able to curate the best solutions for our clients. And we really assemble a solution that may be multiple pieces, uh, multiple publishers to create the right ecosystem for you. 
So we work really across the spectrum of all of these areas of nonprofit. Today, we're going to focus, of course, on uh, the budget management and the Vena solution that we're going to get to. But you can see we work with other tools as well. And some of you on this call, I, I noticed are already existing clients, so you're familiar with some of our work. Um, others of you may not have worked with JMT before. So this is what we're going to focus on today, this little red piece of the pie with Vena. I forgot I put that really cool graphic in, and I'm sure everyone is really impressed. Um, <laughs> another uh, quote that I like to use is from John here, who just talks about how the implementation, the onboarding process was really critical in, in our crowning achievement. So, you know, software is just software, right? But setting it up and implementing it correctly is what really makes the difference. So we've been through a rough year. Nobody, all of us have horror stories of what we've lived through over these last seven, eight months. And uh, one of the things that I think it's universal is that everyone agrees there is no excuse any longer for working with outdated technology. I've talked to people who are who went through terrible situations where they literally couldn't, you know, cut checks because they had the only way to do that was to go physically to their office and they couldn't get into their office because it was shut down, things like that. And I think we all agree that modern technology is critical now. And so we're going to talk today about Vena and how it's, its modern technology can help you with your budget process. Now, even long before COVID, as I said, we've been working with nonprofits for 30 years. We're really familiar with uh, the typical nonprofit budget process that we see. And so we've compiled some data here. The average nonprofit budget process is four to six months. Although I have heard some terrible outliers, I'll never forget one person who said 10 months of the year she's working on building the budget for the next year. There are only two months of the year when she isn't building a budget for the next year. And during those two months, I guess she's just taking a breather before she gears back up. But the average is about four to six months. Uh, when we talk in nonprofits, when you talk about collaboration, I put that in quotes because collaboration usually means just emailing spreadsheets around. And I always like to use a picture of Oprah. Hey, everybody gets a spreadsheet in the typical nonprofit budget process. So with that, that leads me into, we like to keep these things interactive. So I hope everyone's on their toes now. Megan, we have a poll question, do we not? And doesn't it involve spreadsheets? Yes. Yes, we do, Andy. I'll go ahead and launch it now. Should show up on your screen here now. And the question is, how many people in your organization contribute to budget creation? So if you wouldn't mind just answering so we can just get a, get a feeling for what everybody's answers are around here. And we do have a lot of votes coming in already. Andy, we'll give it a few more, few more seconds, let most people get their votes in. Yeah, we'll give it a moment. So far, it looks like the five to nine people range is leading with about 60% of the votes so far. Wow, five to nine. Well, that's, that's good. I've seen some of, we did this poll question on once before. I think it was like 15 to 20 was the average. So not mm -hmm. as many yeah. in this group, I guess. Yeah, exa exactly. All right. We well, do have a good number of the votes, and I'll go ahead and share that in that poll and share the results so you can just see, see what the results look like there. But you can see... Five to nine have 60% of the votes, but we also had 25% of people say 10 plus people contributing to budget creation. Very good. Well, thank you, Megan. And we'll do another poll question. So everyone keep on your toes. The next one you'll be graded on and we're gonna submit the answers to your CPA <laughs> and it will be part of your <laughs> office. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Let's see here, let me move on on mine. Whoops. Okay. so. Many of you on this call are the uh, unfortunate people in your organization who have to now take these spreadsheets and piece them together. If, if you think even five or 10 people sending around spreadsheets, and often I've seen some really awesome spreadsheets with you know, 15, 20 worksheets for every workbook. So you could multiply that five times multiple sheets and it can get cumbersome as you all know. So uh, instead of budgeting to your strategy, let's spend our time determining which spreadsheet cell is not linking correctly. And isn't that the case? I mean, but Excel is a great tool, actually. I love Excel. And in fact, Vena uses the good stuff in Excel. But when you start having broken links and version control problems, that's where budget, where Excel really becomes a nightmare. So then on top of all of that work you do, this idea of recasting your budget based on changes in the world around you. Earlier this year, we all saw one of the most dramatic changes we've ever seen, which is COVID. And I'm sure many of you were in a situation where your board needed a new plan and they needed it quickly. And so 
when the board or your CEO or whoever needs a new plan, you have to quickly change your previous assumptions. You have to collaborate, in this case, uh, earlier this year with a suddenly remote workforce, uh, really had no time for wasting on data collection or entry. And ultimately, you're trying to make strategic decisions and recommendations on that data, but then the data might change again. I mean, earlier this year, when COVID was really just rapid fire changing things, just one day you might open up a, a set of assumptions and the next day things would be completely changed. So uh, it was a crazy year and hopefully we'll never experience anything quite like that before. But I think it it shined a light on just, you know, how difficult it is to roll with any changes that go on in the world around you. So all of this though really is not a problem when you use Venna. And so what we like about Venna in a nutshell at JMT is it uses all the good stuff in Excel and gets rid of all the bad. And I'll show you in a moment how that works. But essentially, you're able to take advantage of all the green check boxes you see there uh, on the screen, but you still get to use the familiarity of a tool like Excel that, we, that most of you already know how to use and use well. And that's a really great thing about it. The other thing about it is it, it allows you to make things very easy for your staff by creating your own workflow and, and uh, data direction really for your process in your organization using a tool like this and even get you board ready reports right out of the system. Even if you're on an antiquated general ledger system and you don't wanna go through the hassle of changing a general ledger system right now, you can get data fed into Venna and use it for board ready reports. So I wanna to get to, I'm gonna close this now for just a moment and pull up my actual Venna system. So this is, I've logged into my de uh, Venna demo database and, uh, and I'm gonna show you that. Now, before I do though, let's do our other poll, Megan. Well, isn't our, I thought one of the questions was about how many spreadsheets you have. Is that the one we got lined up now? Yes, it is. Let me pull it up real quick, Andy. Yes, okay, I'll go ahead and launch it now. It is, how many MS Excel worksheets does your budget contain? So just, went ahead and launched that. You can see a, n a number of different options there. So we'll we'll give everyone a few seconds to answer this one as well. But we already and have by worksheet, really we, good. We, we mean work, you know, the, the actual sheets, the actual tabs in your Excel workbook, of course. I've seen some fun ones over the years. I've always joked that yeah. the average nonprofit CFO or controller, God forbid, if you lost your job today, you could probably get a job tomorrow treat, teaching people how to use Excel because I've seen some pretty incredible uh, spreadsheets created in your average nonprofit organization over the years. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. So it looks like, I'll go ahead and share these results. It looks like most of our votes are in here, um, but it does look like answers are really all across the board. We have some zero to five being the top answer choice, which is really great, um, but we do have some, you know, five to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and some 50 plus as well. So hopefully everybody can see those results on their screen. Yeah, well, thank you, Megan. That's interesting stuff. So I, uh, my best wishes to the person or people who's, who answered 50 plus, uh, truly. <laughs> that must be a lot of fun. So here in, back in over here in the Venna system that I'm logged into, this is a web browser. This is a cloud-based tool. I happen to use Chrome. That's just my personal preference, but you can use any of the browsers that you want. I logged in to this demo Venna system. And this first thing I wanna show you, I'm logged in as the manager. And here in this manager, this is, I think I showed a screenshot similar to this a moment ago, but this is where you can set up your actual budget workflow for you and your people. And then each of these, this isn't just a fancy little uh, diagram, underlying all of this are actual uh, rules and processes that, that define you know, all the, the particular personalization that you wanna have for your process in your organization. So this is one place where you can really outline your process and make it easy. But what's nice is let's let's show you where it really makes a difference. First thing I want to do is I want to pull up and actually do show you how data gets entered. I'm going to hit this detailed OPEX input. Now, remember when I said that Venna uses Excel. And so what it essentially does is it uses Excel as the framework, but the data comes from the Venna cloud which of course resides, as you can see here, I, I used a browser to get to it, but it revi resides in the Venna servers. And, and Excel is just the front end way that you look at that data, just as 
a web browser is the front end way that you sometimes look at data as well. So in this case, I'm going to switch over to the browser, or excuse me, from the browser over to the Excel template and show you how it works. It says check out because what this means is think of it almost like when you go to the library, if anybody goes to the library anymore, uh, when you check out a book, nobody else can check it out because you have it. Well, depending on your role in the organization, you're going to have one unique slice of the organization's budget that you are now going to be working on. And of course, you do not want anyone else in the organization working on the same data at the same time. And so when you check it out, you are locked, locking anyone else out of any of the data that you are working on. Of course, you're going to set security parameters pretty strictly so that people aren't, you know, checking out the entire organization at once or anything like that. So when I check it, you might notice down here, it simply opened up an Excel file, it downloaded it, and now I'm opening it. And here we go. So I'm pulling this up and it is actually going to ask me a couple of questions. It's going to prompt me to ask me about what cut of data I want to look at in my sample demo database. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at two things. I'm going to grab just my San Francisco area. I'm going to look at 2021. And I am going to, I think, I'm not, well, I'll do 21. And then I'm going to grab forecast, my forecast version instead of my budget version. And when I do this, it's going to populate the sheet accordingly. And now it loads. And you can see that I've got all these, this is a, a lot of combination. There are some actuals in here that we pulled straight from an accounting system. But then you also notice there are these blue fields and these blue fields are fields that I can change. So let's say, for example, I want to do recruitment and I'm going to put in my number for July. I need a, in July next year, I'm going to be hiring some folks and I've, I've got to put in some recruitment expenses. So I guess I'll just do uh, 99999 and type that in. So this is actually, all I'm doing is entering this data and it's going to it's going to flow back into the Venna cloud. Now I can also make a note like, hey, we need to hire some folks. I can also do things like uh, look around at my actuals and see where they might be from previous years. For example, I can look down on the actual transactions here. Oh, not on that cell. I'm sorry. I'll do that on another one. But this is where you would enter that data. And now I will simply check this data back in. It says, do I want to save it to the Venna database? And I say, yes, I do. And it's warning me. I had put in a, a soft warning that if I exceed the budget by 20% or more, I got to add a comment. And I'm just going to say yes. So as you can see, that was a soft warning. But you can lock people out of doing those kinds of changes if you'd like. And now it's asking me again, do I want to check this file in? Because you might notice, if you were watching earlier, once I checked it out, this button switched over to check back in. And so, yes, I do want to check it back in. And now you can see it went back to check out here on the Venna cloud. And that OpEx template is, is back and can be checked out by someone else for their own cut of data. So, so that is how you enter data. And I just did one cell, obviously. You can use Excel and you can do lots and lots of different cells, but I just want to give you a sense of how that works. And then let's come over here and take a look at some of these reports. So if I come down to this expense variance analysis report, again, same thing. It's just going to open it in Excel. It is now finished downloading. And when I pull this up, this is for my entire organization. But you should be able to see I am on forecast. I am on. I should be good to go. Go, let's just see if this shows my data entry and it's loading my data for me, populating it. And you can see now, this is the actual, this is the report showing all of the, uh, the different areas of the organization. And I, I, I pulled the wrong cut here, but the 99999 would flow back in if I had entered, if I had, limited this to just San Francisco. What I did was I pulled the whole organization up and it's rolled into that number. But this is then where you can start looking at the at some of the detail on these reports. So this is also where I want to demonstrate a couple other things. So if I come down here to say, I clicked on a cell and I hit drill down, 
to my actual transactions. These are the actual transactions that fed in from my general ledger. And so obviously these are the kinds of things that you can't do with straight up Excel. So you can get a lot of the detail there and open up this little, this little sheet and then here's back the report back over here. There are other things you can do such as uh, you can look at, uh, at the intersection between the bottom level intersections that roll up to it if you wanna do that. And so that's what you have here and so on and so forth. So we only have a half an hour here today for this webcast, but I wanted to give you the sense of just how powerful some of these things are. But I, that's a little bit about just data entry and how you can look at the data and massage it, but there are other things too. And so if I click back over here and I wanna look at something like, let's say I wanna look at this executive dashboard in the system. This is where we talk about uh, board reports. So I have a very simple one set up here. I'm gonna use this PowerPoint online viewer. This actually takes the data from the Venna cloud. All you have to do is set it up once. And if you have a PowerPoint, say for your monthly board meeting, these numbers here are pulling live data from the Venna cloud. So as if users just save new data, it just updates. You don't have to go and manually assemble board reports anymore. You are able to just hit the refresh button when you need to make sure you have the latest, greatest cut of data and use this to really be strategic in looking at things with your board and not waste your time on the low value tasks like assembling all of these things. So again, in the very brief time we had today, our, our goal is to let you see a very high level glimpse of what the Venna tool can do for you. And really, it comes down to that point I just made about the where you spend your time. Do you wanna spend your time gathering data or do you wanna spend it being strategic? Well, of course, you don't wanna to have to spend your time emailing and receiving versions of spreadsheets and doing what we call Excel gymnastics or looking for formula errors or checking on the progress of staff and where they are in the whole process. And most importantly, you certainly do not wanna put off your executive director or your board because you're too busy with these low value tasks. And JMT can make this a reality for you. We have this year come up with a way that we are able to help you get in a tool like this for a monthly fee. And we can even handle the administration of the tools that all you have to do is know how to put data into your system. And we can have you up and running in as quickly as 10 days. So this could be your reality. And the next step would be for you to talk to Megan, who can do a quick assessment and set you up with a, with a call with us. And so Megan will be able to help you with that next step. Now, uh, before we go there though, I do want to pause. And as we said, we wanted to have questions. If anybody has any questions they want to type into the chat window, that would be great. And while, while, you're, while we're waiting to see if any questions come in, I do want to en uh, emphasize one other quick thing, which I forgot to point out to you when I was in the software. Back over here, you can, whoops, it's here. You can actually go in and look at things like dashboards, task managers, task management stuff. And you can actually see where people are, let's see here, on their, um, on their tasks and their processes in the system. And so, this is it, I'm sorry, I clicked wrong. Status tracker. So this is where you can actually check to see the people you've assigned, have they done it? Have they started? Are they still working on it? Have they completed it? Have they done nothing? This can really enable you to be able to, to help people to, uh, to know where people are and uh, graciously and courteously keep on top of them to make sure they get things done. So that would be uh, one of the things, the other things that I wanted to mention to you about making it easy on yourself and staff with your process. Megan, do we have any questions coming in? Yeah, thanks, Andy. It looks like we haven't had any questions um, come in so far, but we'll give it just another minute or two to see if there are any questions that come in um, near the end of today's webinar. If you did think of a question after the webinar ended today and didn't get the chance to ask it, um, just know that I will be following up with everyone, so you'll definitely have the chance to ask that question then, and I'll make sure I get an answer for you then. 
Um, and just while we wait for any last minute questions to come in, I'll expand for a minute or so about what Andy said about our follow up process after the webinar. So I'll be reaching out to everyone through a phone call following today's webinar this afternoon for a more personalized discussion over your organization's budgeting and planning needs. And then as Andy said, from there, we can move into the quick assessment um, that Andy talked about. So just be looking out for that phone call from you this afternoon. And Andy, I think I did see a question just come in. Um, I see two. I, I see one about, I, I'm mm -hmm. glad uh, the question was asked about what accounting systems, because uh, that has been asked on almost every one of these webinars. So. First off, Vena has pre-built integrations with several of the leading systems out there, including Sage Intact, which JMT is also a partner with. So it has a pre-built integration with Sage Intact. It also has pre-built with a couple of other uh, major GLs that you've probably heard of out there. But the beautiful thing about it is it's very easy for us to map the Vena database to any GL, as long as you can get your typical GL reports into a format like an Excel or CSV that we just point it to, then it pulls it all in. So we also at JMT have supported, for example, Community Brands MIP fund accounting for many years. And so we have clients on MIP who are, we're able to, it's not a, as a pre-built integration like it is with Intech, but we're able to pull data from MIP for those clients as well. So essentially any system as long as it isn't some old mainframe system from the 80s where there's no way to get a Excel or CSV feed out of it, uh, any system, we can pull that data into the Vena cloud. The other question I see is what should I budget to buy this? Well, the beautiful thing about Vena is it's scalable and we can actually have, you can be a very small organization or a very large organization and the tool will work for you. So I wish, I don't mean to be evasive on that question, uh, because it really depends on how many people you've got using it. But I can tell you this, we have clients, very small clients, who are able to get in to a Vena solution for a monthly payment of just a couple of hundred dollars a month. Now, again, it scales from there. If you have 30 people using the system, your price is going to be a lot different than if you have one or two. And we'll be happy to talk to you personally after uh, Megan and I or whoever else wants, uh, we can talk with you about your personal situation and very, very quickly get you a good faith estimate as to what it would cost to get into a system like this. Any other questions? I don't see any more, Megan. Yeah, I don't see any more either. And, and like I said before, if there are any other questions after, you can definitely ask me when I follow up. Um, and before, before we did close out today, I see we only have a couple minutes left in our allotted time. I did want to tell everyone that we do have another webinar coming up on October 20th over audit ready financials for nonprofits using Sage Intact. So we definitely recommend getting signed up for that one as well. It's free, like all of ours are, and you can register on our website at jmtconsulting.com. And yeah, it looks like that's all the questions that we had. Um, and so I'll go ahead and close this out today. Like I said, I am looking forward to connecting with you all this afternoon just to get your thoughts and next steps for the webinar. So Andy, is there anything you want to say before we close out today? Just thank you again to everybody for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Again, this has been a rough year. We hope that tools like this uh, Vena tool can help you navigate the uncertain waters that we all have in front of us. But most importantly, I just wish for everyone to have a great rest of your day and stay safe out there. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.